Okay, in this tutorial we're going to explore some more of the 3D pattern modeling tools and the some of the vector drawing suite tools. So let's go and create a new project. Uh, 24 by 8 is what I'm going to set this to, 3 quarter inch deep. Okay, so our board appears here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my grid on and click snap to grid. I'm also going to turn my wood texture off because it's just easier for me to work with it off. Now I'm going to select my smart spline tool and we're going to draw a shape here. Alright, use my smart spline tool to pull out my curve and click on that to turn off the tangency so now I can pull out a different curve and turn off that tangency draw another line and then connect this thing together so with that grid on it's very easy to quickly draw a shape with straight lines and, and get it to be nice and accurate now I'm going to use my grid to manipulate my handlebars here so that I can position them the same on both sides and create a nice symmetrical design shape there. Okay, now I'm going to use my sweep tools. Now sweep tools come in two different flavors. There's the sweep corner and sweep rounded. Sweep corner is going to give you sharp points. Sweep rounded is going to give you rounded corners. Now we've got a sharp point on this, so we're going to click the sharp corner. Okay. Now this profile drawing window appears. In that profile drawing window, we've got a green line, a white line, and a red line. If you look up here, we also have a green line, white line, and right here in the middle, you can see this red point. So the green line is representing the outermost barrier of what you can draw your sweep to be in this on this size board. Your white line is the actual line that you've drawn here, the geometry that you're sweeping. And then the red line is the centermost point where everything is going to meet. Since this is actually just a point here in the middle instead of a line, it means that these things are all going to be overlapping each other in the middle here. So let's use our connected lines tool and let's draw a shape in here. And we'll just draw an angle. Now I can use some of these tools over here. This one will take whatever I've drawn and it'll expand it to the whole board, which we definitely don't want to do. I can click on this one, which will expand it to fit the right and left guides, the red and green line. I can make it just fit between the white and green, or I can make it fit between the white and red, which this is the one that we desire for this. So that way I know it's going all the way to those lines. All right, we also want to use our constraints here to position this to make sure that it's exactly where we want it. We want this to be at a depth of 0.375. And the center point can actually be a little bit higher. Maybe let's pull that over a little more. And let's click OK. Okay, so now we've got that shape. Let's turn our grid off, see it a little bit better. We've got that sweep that we've created, that profile. Angles up here and then angles down and then with that red overlapping in the middle, we've got that overlap. So that looks pretty good. So let's go to our pattern library, go to our basic. And let's just select a filigree in here, something decorative looking. Click on that, and then let's rotate it 90 degrees. Position it here as a hilt to our sword. Let's mirror it 
vertically. And let's go ahead and flip it horizontally. There, it's a nice decorative hilt to our sword shape that we just swept. Okay, so now we want a handle to this sword. Let's turn our grid back on. And with my smart spline tool again, I want to create a rope pattern. So by snapping to angles here, pull out a curve on this side, turn the tangency off, another point down, pull that curve out. Now I need this tangency to be free. And I can set these curves to be how I want them. Alright, so let's use our puffing tools and let's go put a bubble puff on this. And let's set the depth of this to be. 375 and let's pull that puff out exaggerate it select OK all right so we've got our first strand of our rope pattern here we'll pull it up in here to where it meets up with our hilt and let's reduce the height of that a little bit let's maybe move it back down to about 70 just because it's needs to be set back a little more, maybe all the way down to 50. There we go, that looks a little better. Okay, let's right click on that and let's use another one of the new vector drawing tools, the copy offset. I click on copy offset and with this tool I can set it to copy whatever the object is in multiple rows horizontally and vertically and with this piece here so I'm wanting this point here when it's copied to nest up here I need to set that interval appropriately and I had made this on this half inch grid so I need to set this to half inch as well and let's make several of these, about eight. And let's click OK. And boom, it automatically populates the whole rope pattern out. Turn our grid off again so we can see better. All right, now let's utilize another one of our pattern modeling tools. Let's grab our circle. Draw a circle down here at the end. We need a pummel on the end of our sword. Let's use that and let's use the revolve tool. Now with the revolve tool, it's much like the sweep tool. It's got the profile drawing window and instead of the red and greens, it's got a white and yellow line representing the white line of the geometry and the yellow line for the center of the circle. So I'll grab my smart spline tool here again and let's just draw a shape. It can be any shape you wish or whatever is appropriate for what you're making. And, and the tool and I can use this again to make sure that it's spread to the edges that I'm looking for, just like on the sweep, sweep profile. I can spread it to those edges, tweak it a little bit, and then click OK. And it takes that profile shape and revolves it all the way around that circle. So now we've got a nice pummel to our sword handle. Okay, 
now that we've created a sword very quickly let's go ahead and make it into a pattern so select everything on the board and let's go to view carving list open the carving list okay with everything selected in your carving list select your group button all right now that I've got all of these elements grouped I can use my make pattern and actually make it into a pattern so we'll name it sword and save it I'll close my pattern list and open my pattern library now here in my favorites I've got a sword pattern so let's flip this to the back side of the board and let's take that sword pattern and let's place it on there now we know the sword on the front was centered vertically so we'll go ahead and center that one vertically and then flip back to the front and select your pattern there and maybe we want to position it a little closer to center okay we can see here that 1.133 is the distance between the, this point on the end of the sword to the edge of the board so on the back side here we can utilize that same point okay now that they are lined up we can carve a front and back project of this sort. Alright, let's go back to the front. Let's do one more thing to this to make sure that we've got a good carve. Let's select everything again. You can use your control A to select all. And let's click on our outline pattern. Okay, so that gives me an outline of this whole shape. But what we want to do is we want to create a spaced outline around this so that we can carve that out and put some tabs in and make sure that this whole thing will carve out and, and stay tabbed together. So what we're going to use is our path offset tool. This is also part of the vector 2D drawing suite. You click on the path offset and it creates an offset path at whatever distance that you want from the, the geometry that you've selected. So we can select, look here, and we've set it to an eighth of an inch, and it's spacing it out an eighth of an inch. So you can change your corners to be bevels or radiuses, and you can also flip this to be on the inside of that line rather than the outside. But we want this on the outside, and so we'll select OK. All right, so let's go ahead and make this a carved region, and let's make it a pierced carved region, where it carves all the way down. Now, I generally like to use feathers, at least an uh, eighth inch feather, on, and let's flip it to the outside, on any time that I'm carving, especially when I'm carving deep, because it's just easier on the bits to go from a gradual point rather than trying to go straight down. Alright, so now we've got that carved all the way around so it'll free this piece easily, front and back. And when you're doing two sided carvings on the carve right, it's actually very, very easy to do because you just set your projects up as two sided in the software and it'll always carve the back side first and then you flip your board just as it flips right here on the screen flip it over in the software and then it'll go and carve the front side and so we put this carved region on the front side so that'll be its last operation and then we can put some tabs in here just to keep the thing from falling out during carving 
We don't need a whole lot of them. Just enough to secure it well. And with the place tabs button, we can set that depth to be 375. The place where our patterns were meeting in the middle. And set the patterns to be flat and click OK. OK. Now these will be easily cleaned up and cut off after the carving's done, but it'll keep them from coming out in the process. So we've got our simple sword very quickly and easily done with our new tools and the Carveright software.